For once, let's forget about the most popular tourist attractions and escape the crowds. For that, let's go and head up to the highest station of the Swiss Alps and in all of Europe. Let me tell you the truth about seeing the Matterhorn. It is actually very common that the Matterhorn is covered in the clouds. This is because it's very high up, it's at 4,400 plus meters. Now you can partially see it, it looks really beautiful, very mystical. But yes, usually I would say during winter you have the best chances to see the Matterhorn, especially during February, then often you have a clear blue sky view. Although during winter you will have pretty good chances to get an unobstructed view over the Matterhorn, it will be always days in where it's in the clouds. In that case, you might not even see it when you go up to the Roton, neither when you're at the Gornagat. But you might have a last chance and that would be up at its little brother, the Klein Matterhorn. Though honestly, there are even more reasons why you should head up there. Down in Zermatt you'll have to walk quite a bit to take the first teleferric to access Furi. This first cabin ride will take you along the river Fischba and through the upper part of the village. Arrived at Furi, you will have to take another cabin ride that will take you up to Tolkno Steg. The ascent here is quite steep, you will be gaining quite a lot of altitude in a short time. After roughly 10 to 15 minutes, you eventually will arrive up at the Tolkno Steg. Just arrived at the Tolkno Steg. It's quite windy. Otherwise, nice weather, sunny, and you can see fog and mist pulling up. The Matterhorn is often covered, but otherwise, it's quite a beautiful day. Now, the Klein Matterhorn that's closed at the moment because it's so windy. I hope it's going to open up later. There is a good chance, but it's not sure yet. This is something that you have to keep in mind. It's not for granted that you can go up to the Kleinmatterhorn in any case. If it's too windy or if there is heavy snowfall, then the gondola is going to be closed. On this day, I was lucky that the access up to the Tolkno Steg finally opened after 11 am. Here, you'll have to be a bit flexible in your plans when it comes to the Kleinmatterhorn. If you want to have absolute certainty for your plans up in Zermatt, then the Gonegrad would be the safest choice for seeking higher altitudes and panoramic impressions. Also, bear in mind that the access to the climb of the Horn is limited in time. The train to the Gonegrad operates into the night, while the cabin up in the climb of the Horn is already closing after 4 pm. Thus, make sure to go there during the morning. After 1 pm, it already will be too late. At the Tolkensteg, you may get a nice view to the Matterhorn. From there, it feels really close, and you can also see how gigantic this mountain is. At the backside, you can also look down to Zermatt. The village, though, will already feel quite far away. It's always interesting what sort of people you meet. They just bumped into Manu Sharma from India. Yes, and I bumped into him, and I was like, he was vlogging. I saw him vlogging, and I just. I asked him, that way we started, we started talking to each other. <laughs> we have a pretty good view to the Matterhorn. Yes, the Matterhorn. And the lovely mountain that you all behind us. Yeah. And it's not the Tobler Rock Mountain anymore. No, why? No, they cannot print it anymore. Oh, okay. That's sad. Oh. <laughs> I just mentioned in my YouTube that people who eat Tobler, they can see this mountain printed on that. But now that's bad news. <laughs> yeah, they're not producing enough in Switzerland anymore. So the Swissness okay. thing is gone and they cannot print the Matterhorn anymore. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> also bumped again into Tatiana who went skiing with her friends. It was a really nice coincidence to see her again. In general, this day had quite a good omen. Things just became better and better as the time passed. They finally opened up. That's amazing. Though it's only open for pedestrians. I'm really excited. That's my second time. But the first time with these new cabins. They definitely look very modern spacious.
just arrived at the Klein Matterhorn, Europe's highest mountain station. The air here, it's really thin. So you'll feel your pulse, it will go up. Now let's go to Lookout. Unfortunately, the platform is closed, so I can only go to the Glacier Paradise. There is an ice palace. Now, you will notice, you'll feel that it's hard to breathe up here because the air is quite thinner. Thus, really make sure don't exhaust yourself. Walk slowly because you're quite did an ascent from 2,000 up to nearly 4,000 meters. What a pity that the platform was closed. But no worries, I'll be showing you another viewpoint later. But first, let's go into the Glacier Cave. So this here is a Glacier Palace. Now the right way to go is this one on the left. It's one of four Glacier Palaces we have here in Switzerland. This is all natural ice. Very fascinating. We're really standing inside a real glacier. Now it's really nice. Take a look at the ceiling. You can really see the natural texture of the ice. I think this is something very fascinating. Now this glacier palace, it's a bit different from the other ones. So for example, the one at South Fe, it's more about the sculptures. The Titlis, it's really just a short walk. Jungfrau Joch is really all polished. And then here, it's really more about the natural texture of the ice. And I find that's something Really cool, you can walk up here. And then you'll arrive at this beautiful ice cave. Take a look at the ceiling. Wow. So beautiful. Make sure to take your time in here, not only because you shouldn't exhaust yourself on almost 4,000 meters above sea level, but also because there is a lot to see. There are many ice sculptures all around, each of them being different and many of them being a reference to the canton of Valle. For example, these fighting cows of the Eringer breed. 10 minutes down here is certainly not enough. You will be surprised of how much there is to be discovered. But think about that. Why would you rush through this beautiful place? Remember, takes you more than one hour to reach, and then would it not be more worth to enjoy it a little bit more up there? This here is the Star Lounge, the highest located bar in all of Europe, almost 4,000 meters. Inside a glacier, how fascinating is that? Now, if you're a bit familiar with the canton of Valle, it's very known for its wine. So in here you can taste some of the local wines produced in Valle. And people say the canton of Valle has two religions. One is Roman Catholicism and the second one it's wine. This is the panorama. You can see different mountains, the Matterhorn. So nice. You often will hear, and so I've mentioned when I talk about the glacier caves, they will be standing inside the eternal ice. That, however, is not the case. Surely we will be able to enjoy visiting these caves for probably another or even 20 more years, but the melting of the glaciers happens at an alerting rate. In a future video, I'll be explaining a bit more on how the climate change affects the Swiss Alps and Switzerland. So I just bumped into this nice Slovakian folk and here we have some sculptures. Now, do you have any idea what this could be? No, I have no idea, no. but this room looks really nice. Okay, you see it's a man, right? Yeah. And you see there is a cauldron. Yes. And do you see he's pouring something into yes. it? Yes, what is it? It's a traditional way of making cheese. Oh, I love Swiss wine cheese. Wow. 
thank you. Actually, <laughs> I didn't get it from up there, but when I came down here, I suddenly realized it's the making of cheese. This here is the lookout. You can see Italy over there, Mont Blanc, and then also the Matterhorn. At the backside platform, you may see the climb at the Horn Glacier, and you can even cross over to Italy. Be aware, you shouldn't head into that direction after 3 p.m. This is because everything at the climb at the Horn Dam is closing. And also the last cabin to Zermatt is at 3.30 p.m. Well, you can already imagine what happens if you miss that one. At Furi I decided to go for a winter hiking trail down to Zermatt. It took me about one hour really beautiful and it also feels very relaxing. Hey! Yeah, <laughs> let's, have, let's have a drink here. Zermatt is a really great village to be visited here in Switzerland, especially during winter. Now if you want to know what are the other things that you can do up there, then I'm going to see you in this video. Otherwise, if you're more interested in winter in general, then let's meet over there.